All right, everyone, uh, I want to welcome you to the opening of the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society 2015 here in Boca Raton, Florida. Very hot and humid here in August, but we're very nicely situated here at Florida Atlantic University. And I want to welcome everybody today. I'm going to give an introduction to the conference and also an update on the organization itself. Uh, the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society was formed this year formally by former NPA members. It's a 170C2B. I'm not uh, an expert in what those things are, but all I do know is that it is not a 501, and I know that there were some concerns about that uh, posed, posed by other members who had experience with 5013C or uh, yeah, three C's in the problem uh, with the legalities of that. So we decided to go with, how, how do you say, a little lesser uh, imposing, uh, I guess, organization. Again, I'm not an expert on that. If you want to look it up or talk to somebody, uh, we can get you in touch with them. The C, we, we, we'll talk about that too, but about 95% of the active members from the MPA have moved over, probably even more. And when we uh, had a kind of campaign, once we incorporated and uh, sent out a letter, an email to everybody, letting everybody know about that, we actually got quite a few people paying their membership. So I think that was really important for us to go through these steps. Um, we also have an operating agreement that allows members to remove anyone and everyone from the directorate. Now, obviously, if you know the history of what happened between the MPA and now the members of the CNPS, uh, you will understand why that's there. This means if we get anybody there we don't dis that we disagree with and that we try to remove somebody from a direct the directorate and they're not complying, that can't happen now. Legally, we can't remove them. So that's a really, obviously, one of the most important points. Um, some of the technical specs, as I call them, being the computer guy, uh, we purchased the domain name, uh, naturalphilosophy.org. Uh, it wasn't cheap, but it was a way cheaper than naturalphilosophy.com, which was, I think, it's running about $5,000. Um, but we did purchase this. It was. Again, not cheap, but it was uh, purchased by donors. I, I convinced everybody that, in my opinion, the CNPS and its membership is by far the best stewards of the domain, because in the world of the internet, these names mean something, and who owns them should mean something. So we're very happy to have uh, gotten that. And actually, if I think about all the pain we went through, myself as well, I'm quite uh, happy in this sense that we actually got this because the other name before was something I picked which wasn't really anything other than just a placeholder for people to find us. Now we have five websites, um, two of them of course uh, are actually mine, but um, I'm hoping to pass those over to the uh, CNPS sometime. And of course we have natural philosophy, but uh, another uh, that one's based on WordPress. WordPress is the most popular open source uh, uh, website uh, generator or uh, program out there. So we base that on. It's running on its own server that's, that actually is uh, owned by the CNPS. Uh, before, things were on my server, but right now that's no longer the case. The first three up there are on the server of the CMPS, so there's no problem of who owns it. I know there's a lot of worry about the, the the database before, but what happened before was quite simple. No one was doing it, no one had the ability or wanting to do it, although the need was great. And I have my own private server on the internet, it's my own dedicated server, and I have been uh, letting people and let, use it, I still do, and that's why everything was the way it was, but I we rectified that with the CMPS so there was no longer any conflict. The community.naturalphilosophy.org 
is actually what they call Buddy Press. Buddy Press is sort of a place that's sort somewhat like um, Facebook, but a little bit more ample. You can have forums there, you can have the stay status of it. It's really pretty much every member uh, can go in there and talk about what they want, make a finding. Let's say you find a web page that's interesting, well, you post it there and other people can read it. It's sort of like the Facebook. Um, in fact, I don't think I have a slide about, about that, uh, but I will see if I can remember that. The DB philosophy of natural philosophy, which is database.naturalphilosophy.org, is formerly the worldsci.org. Actually, worldsci.org is still out there. That was the database that uh, Greg and I had put together. And those, uh, that was where we cataloged from 2008 on for two years. We just went across the entire world of the internet and cataloged almost 3,000 scientists that were working outside the mainstream. Uh, but that has been formally moved over to the CMPS, which I have uh, given to the CMPS, uh, that I developed the software for all of this. I'm giving that free of, free of charge to the CMPS on their server. So that's really what formally is there. If you haven't taken a look, taken, take a look at that. Uh, I did fix the map on there so you can see everything plotted from that database around the world. And it's quite interesting to see how many countries, I believe we're almost 80 countries, we have scientists, including Iran, where we have scientists like ourselves working outside the mainstream doing really quite amazing uh, work. So they're on all continents. Um, then we have two more. One I'd like to get over to the uh, CNBS. And uh, you may have noticed, you can see over to the side here, um, uh, another placard here. We are concurrently doing the what I have come up with, which I call the SciFlix uh, Film Festival. The name SciFlix actually came from Greg Volk, one of the great uh, CMPS members who is taking a few years off from being totally too intense in all of this. And um, he came up with that name. But the idea is very simple, and it came a lot from my own experience as a documentary filmmaker. And that is when, when I sent my film out to all the festivals around the world, 80 of them, including the best in the world. I know all about all that because I hung out with all the best documentarians. And the, the thing is, uh, we have uh, those sent, sent those things out, and it turns out that there was one thing I didn't count on, and that was the gatekeepers of these film festivals are actually people what I call, I've coined myself, as I call them, intellect, uh, social intellects. And the, what, I, what a social intellect to me are those people who consider themselves very smart, who are up to, to reading all the things in the newspapers, so they know all the, the explanations for the Higgs particle, they know all the explanations for Einstein's latest, the latest and greatest of experiments. And they don't, but they don't check, of course, their facts. As a documentarian filmmaker, the idea of why you do a documentary is very simple. You want to show the world something they don't know no, before uh, the rest of the world finds out, or you want them to see something that they should see. And I thought to myself, uh, you know, Einstein being wrong, amongst other things, is a huge piece of information that the world needs to see. What I didn't count on is that the people who are the what are called the judges or reviewers, which are not usually the heads of the festivals, are going to look at things and then they pass those on to the next layer up. So they have many of these film festivals, literally today and age, because of the digital age, they receive now up to 5,000 films. So when they see an Einstein wrong, they look at it and say, well, um, I, and here's, I'll give you an experience that I've had. When I was at going to the IDA Awards when Al Gore was there, Ken Burns was there, um, uh, and Michael Moore, uh, all these people. When, when I would talk to people about my, my documentary, and they said, what's your documentary? I said, is Einstein wrong? He goes, oh, Einstein's wrong? Oh, I don't know about that. I said, yeah, well, that's why I made the documentary. And they would then say to me, well, I read everything about science. I consider myself very, um, 
smart and intelligent, up to date on all signs. If Einstein was wrong, I would know about it. Now if you think about it, that's exactly what documentarians shouldn't do. They should say, wow, that's a big story, let me see it. Of course, the average person actually does that. When I screened this to 150 people, they all loved it. There was, they were coming up to me in the audience from up there. Uh, some people there were people who, who uh, had their own businesses. Other people were just plain ordinary workers. They were intellectuals, but they'd come up and say, they didn't come up and say, Einstein's wrong. And I mean, Einstein's right. What are you talking about? So the problem wasn't the film. The problem wasn't the production. The problem wasn't the story. The problem is the gatekeepers, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking about in this conference is in science, uh, society, and consensus. And that is, why is it that a film that's quite entertaining, and I know because I've shown it and had a lot of feedback, great music, original music, that should have been perhaps even an Oscar nomination because they look for big, big uh, 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 themes. Why didn't that happen? So this is, was the progenitor or the uh, beginnings of what we, I said, okay, we need to have uh, a film festival that will not have this problem with the gatekeeper. And we came up with the Cyflix, and uh, that is a quite a, a great idea. And uh, this year, Nick, Nicholas Percival and I did them. We had solicitations from films all around the world. We received uh, a number of them, and we reviewed them, and we also have the ability to start recognizing, and we will recognize in this conference, uh, as part of this conference, the films, and and we, we include documentaries, short documentaries, edutainments, um, and we also include lecture. This year we're only giving out five because we have, I'd rather have some of the people who have made great films be here, like Neil Adams, has, has a dissident video that has been shown to more than, has two million views online. We also have Randall Myers, who made a film 10 years ago that was really groundbreaking. Uh, he couldn't make it this year, so we're gonna pull the off, or we're gonna be, just like we do with the awards, we want, we'd like to have them recognized. But this year, that's what this is about. Uh, Nick Percival has been very positive on this. We also do movie reviews, so we'll take the Particle Fever movie about Higgs say, this is a great entertainment, there's only one problem, they don't investigate whether this is all uh, good science or not. And so we need to be that voice. So the voice of the Cyflix is not only the awards itself, but we do reviews. Harry Ricker also has been doing really great reviews on some of this. And we're gonna go out there and tear some of this apart and be that voice. So that's what Cyflix, and I hope to move that and get that as part, uh, once the membership is going, perhaps vote that in as part of this organization's responsibility. The last one is Dissident Science, and uh, we are listed, Dissident Science is listed on iTunes podcasts. So this has got some pretty good profile. Um, I've done some, it's a little bit behind because of this conference I've been, but my, my idea is that at least every couple weeks come out with a 45 minute um, presentation on that. Um, abbreviations, let's go on. Uh, it was the NPA, the Natural Philosophy Alliance. Uh, if we were to abbreviate everything, John Chappelle, as you know, is the founder of the NPA, and one of the reasons um, it was my suggestion that we actually make it part of the name is that when we moved away from the NPA, that it was very clear that we were taking with it the members and the vision of John Chappelle, which I had the pleasure to meet in 1996 and actually shared a room with him. Uh, the JCNPS is a little too long, so we figured you'd take his last name, CNPS. It's easier to say, so that was the idea there. Um, I want to pay special thanks to these people. Uh, Nick, Nicholas Percival, Duncan Shaw was with us today. Lou, Ellen, I won't say her name because she told me over the phone I still couldn't pronounce it. It doesn't pronounce like it's written, but we wish her uh, a speedy recovery. She had uh, surgery just, uh, I think, last week. We heard she's doing well. Uh, incredible work she has done, uh, uh, and her son as well to help us get the nonprofit state. Of course, Greg has all through this been very helpful. He's taking a breakdown uh, very much well-deserved break. 
uh, Duncan Shaw, I want to thank him, uh, particularly in his wording and his crafting of a lot of our emails and communications with the membership. Very good, and of course, uh, with his background, at the same things in very uh, good ways. I'd often say too much, and uh, he would uh, often help out with all of our communications. And then Nick, Nicholas Percival was always there, putting in very detailed work, uh, and that was uh, quite quite well. Um, uh -oh. Are we going backwards now? Here we are. Okay. Um, this conference was the same as we're going to focus on the CMPS scientists' work. Uh, that's very important. I know Duncan Shaw was very adamant about that. And of course, I was too, but we want to make sure people understand that the new directions we're taking are not going to take away from the basis of what this is all about, and that is for scientists to get together and actually sit in a room and talk with people who don't have all those... Uh, you have fellow... One, one person came up to me at all the conferences, says, you know, it's amazing. When I talk about my work to somebody, they get it. <laughs> and if you think about it, it doesn't, you don't really think about that too often, but it's absolutely true. Um, how many people, when you talk to your friends about it, they look at you like they're, you're talking Greek to them. Here, everyone's used to that. The talks, uh, question and answers, this, this conference, because we're between organizations, is is a smaller conference in attendance, but that would give us great time to really talk, which we, I think, is, is going to be, uh, selfishly, is going to be very uh, uh, good for everybody here. We have our banquet on Friday night, and that Friday night will be um, uh, our awards, and that award will be, uh, uh, this year will not be for the scientists, but will be for the uh, films. The reason we did that is because just logistically, because we didn't have as many people here, we thought that would be good, and uh, uh, that's the way we're going to do it this year. Um, also, we have a social night. Uh, normally, we have uh, uh, a night who, where when we have 70 people, we can't invite everybody, but now we can, and that's going to be at my home here in Boca. It's going to be a wonderful night. We're going to have some dinner there. And we're going to screen one of the films. Uh, it's called Forks Over Knives. Very interesting because it's totally based on statistics. I'm on that diet. I reverse my heart disease. It's not anything to be there for you to be converted, but we're going to be eating food that I, that I can eat. And um, what's really great about it is that it will open up our minds a little bit because it's totally based. I don't believe in fad anything. I don't believe in conspiracies. But this is based on a billion people and studying their eating habits and then looking at the statistics. That's it. And so it's going to be a fun night, a little relaxing away from all the heavy stuff. We'll uh, screen that film. In fact, uh, my, my story, my testimonial came out yesterday. I think it was shared uh, on, on, a, on Facebook on their website for the film. And it was, uh, I think they have 700,000 people who followed that. So it's going to be an interesting night. Uh, it'll be a great time, we'll have some wine, we'll have some drinks, we'll have some really great food and see this really pretty amazing documentary. What's new at this conference is the marketing component. Um, we're working on that. Um, part of that is the SciFlix Film Festival. We have a link on that one page from Facebook which was shared. That means people read it. I think of six, uh, 4,000 people read that article on there. There was a click through to Sky Film Festival, and that paper, that article with me and it was shared on Facebook almost a thousand times. So it's out there. And then we have our Universe Hackathon, thanks to my dad's brilliant insight later, and it was in late May. You're going to find out about that. Um, very amazing. He actually, in my opinion, I will say this, if it's true, but he, well, it is true, but it is a solution to the solving of the particle wave duality. Pretty amazing. And believe me, I don't say that lightly because you know me, I don't believe in anything fields or, uh, so it's going to be great. Uh, so we're going to have the Universe Hackathon on uh, Saturday, but we're going to be talking a lot about that on Thursday as well, so don't worry if you're not here. Um, marketing, we're getting the word out. Blogs on the naturalphilosophy.org are 
going better and better. Harry Ricker, as you know, has been writing up quite a lot. I moved our mail to what's called MailChimp. We've been sending that out for quite a while. Now it's working very well. Uh, the blogs, I think, are getting a lot of hits. I'm seeing people on Facebook sharing those all over. We have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter page for the MPA. Or the, see, there you go, CMPS. And we also have a YouTube channel. So all these videos you see here today will be on the YouTube channel in the coming month when I get those uploaded and those get shared. Some of the ones from the past conferences this membership was made, making up have been viewed 4,000 times. So they do get viewed out there. We're going to have a panel discussion with Dr. Andrew Bartlett, who I see slipped in the door. We're very happy to have him here. Very excited. I'm really looking forward. I've had numerous talks with him. Uh, we're very honored to have him here. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion with myself also about the marketing aspect. How do we get scientists to take a few minutes? I have to fight with my dad all the time. And that's okay because Everyone here is working on stuff, but I'm going to try to convince people more and more. If you just take a half an hour a week and talk to somebody about it, that's interesting. That interest that you have, like have a conversation in your blog, can then be shared and then many people will see it. It becomes indexed on the internet, so when people Google it, you may come up in those. Uh, um, also, we have meetup groups. Believe it or not, the moment I put the word, I'm not kidding, I put the word hackathon, the universe hackathon, we went from only a couple of us going to these local meetup groups, it's a local CNPS, to what now, seven now people are signing up, just because of that word, that intrigued them quite a bit. And I think we have something actually there for those who are, are in the, if, if, for those of people who believe the universe is made up of space, mass, and massive motion, and that's it, which we believe, um, we think we have something. So that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, I talked about this to honor filmmakers of science films. We'll present the awards on Friday night's banquet. We'll have two screens, Wednesday night today, the anomalies by Barry Satterfield, and questions and answers afterwards with Barry and the production crew. Uh, Thursday night, we're going to be uh, screening Forks Without Knives, knives spelled as in surgical. It'll uh, be hosted by myself at my home. Uh, it's not going to be a light supper. My, my wife, uh, who is actually a clothes designer, but an incredible cook she learned from one of the best Brazilian cooks in El Los Angeles around the world, uh, will be cooking, and so it's going to be some really delicious food. So it's going to be a wonderful night. Um, and the little, there's the uh, symbol. Um, I made this, if you see this like swirl there for the side flicks there, um, that, that sort of galaxy looking thing. I made a beautiful logo for the MPA. And as an artist and a scientist, I was very unhappy that I couldn't use it again. <laughs> so you're going to see that in many places and I, I actually took advantage of that. And so I love that and so you can see sort of like the film reel in the middle of a galaxy. It's pretty cool. Side flicks and the grand prize winner, etc. Those are the same leafs. Um, in fact, two of the films I've actually contacted who won this year. Uh, we're not, we don't have time to screen them, but they are very happy to be included. Actually contacted me and we're very happy I will be sending their awards. So it's, it's working out. Um, the Universe Hackathon is going to be from Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, led by the Light Gravity Structures Group. That's uh, what we're calling ourselves now. Um, the Hack 1.1 was done in May through July of 2015. Gravity and Light completed. Yes, you'll hear about that on Thursday. And the Universe Hackathon, we realize now that this is an incredible model where we've, in our opinion, solved light and gravity. Now, it's, we realize very shortly after that that we have to start working on atomic structure. So, uh, and there happens to be people here talking about those things, so we're very excited about that. I know Duncan Shaw has got to talk on that. Um, it's based on assumptions and Glenn uh, Borkert's uh, neomechanics, infinity, mass, mass and movement, and pushes. That's all we have. Everything has to be made of that, in our opinion. Uh, infinity means uh, structures that are no partless parts. That means there's no ultimate particle and it, uh, in, in the other direction, too. Everything is mass and movement, including light, gravity, and structure. So that's what that's about. 
There it is. Look at that great logo that I, that I made and still around. <laughs> so it's a uni universe hackathon. I guess it's great to have a person that's actually a scientist and an artist who can actually get all that stuff. I don't have to prove it, I do it. So, so that's a logo I came up with. Um, I think it, we have a real uh, marketing thing and a real thing. Get this, I will leave you with this um, uh, message uh, and that was from the hackathon is that I was talking to one of the people who would be there. People at my work were sitting at lunch talking about this stuff and I'm building the CMPS one by one from my think tank where I work at uh, LexisNexis. And he and I told him, I came up, I said, you know, this model that my, my father sort of started, even though that many people had done that, um, is really could turn into crowd theory. Because of the assumptions we have, we could actually do like crowdfunding. No, this is crowd theory. We have the rules. You come up, you come up with your model of moving mass to do these things. So that could be quite amazing. That could attract a lot of people. So this is the first CMPS conference. We have lots of time. Everybody speaks to everyone. Panel discussions, video broadcast, at least we hope with that, um, I'm going to try to get that set up at lunchtime. And I think we uh, welcome everybody, so thank you so much. <laughs>